Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. This morning we are carrying on in the Word of God in the book of Acts. And uh, with the ministry of the apostles and the disciples, uh, this morning we're going to be uh, going through a very short piece. Uh, but it, it basically it's uh, history telling us uh, or showing us how the Lord moved a certain apostles around uh, to get to areas where they uh, hadn't reached yet. Uh, at this uh, point, we are going to be reading about Barnabas and Saul. So Barnabas, at this stage we are reading now, is the, the head over Saul. So he's busy teaching Saul. Uh, he's busy taking him around, introducing him to churches. They just spent a considerable time together in Jerusalem ministering there. And uh, the Lord is going to move them now. So if you want to follow in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 12 from verse 25, the Bible says, When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, uh, they returned from Jerusalem, um, taking with them John, also called Mark. So here they are bringing with them a young uh, apostle that they are training up and, and teaching, John uh, called Mark. Then Acts uh, chapter 13 verse 1, the Bible says, Now in the church at Antioch, uh, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, uh, Lucille, Lucius, and uh, Serena. And then um, Saul, verse 2. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Now again, uh, the previous week, we uh, set aside and dedicated one day where some of us in our congregation uh, and in uh, Christian Harvest Center, we said we're going to fast and we're going to pray and seek the face and the will of the Lord. And uh, through that, we believe that the Lord shifted and moved a lot of things in the spiritual realm, uh, set a lot of things in order, uh, set a lot of foundations and we can now go forward and build on that. So we can see again here in the word of God uh, that verse 2 says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting. So fasting is a, a powerful, powerful gift that the Lord has given us to be able to move the hand of the Lord. So while they were worshipping and fasting, the Holy Spirit came and started speaking to them and said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to set aside for me Barnabas and Saul. So the Spirit of God was building the New Testament church at that stage and knew where everyone's uh, allocated place would be. All the apostles and the disciples and the new believers had to do was to get together and was to pray and was to fast and the Spirit of God would uh, show them. Sometimes He would speak to them like He's speaking to them here now and sometimes um, if they maybe were a little bit too busy, I'm not saying they were, if they were a little bit too busy and, and they, they didn't or couldn't clearly hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Lord would move them in other ways, like bringing in uh, Saul uh, previously to persecute them, and then after that bringing in Herod to persecute them. So, so then they, they uh, were dispersed and were moved out into different areas. Here we can see the importance of worshipping together and fasting together. Um, and then the Holy Spirit started speaking to them and said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Verse 3. So after ha they had fasted and prayed, after they finished their fast and their prayer, it doesn't say how long it, it took them, it could have been three days, it could have been seven days, a traditional uh, Jewish fast was normally seven days. Um, so the Bible says here, so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So this as well is uh, fitting with uh, what the New Testament teaches us in uh, passing on callings or uh, blessing uh, new believers or new disciples or new apostles with their callings and blessing them to be able to move on. Uh, so here, here we can see that 
the rest of the apostles at that stage um, that were in Antioch uh, after the prayer, after the fasting. Very important. They did not break that um, obedience. Let's say it was three days or let's say it was seven days. Maybe, let's say in day four, the Spirit of God started speaking to them and said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. I want to send them uh, to go and do my work. Uh, they didn't break the fast and the, the worship and the prayer on day four. They, they finished um, the, the seven-day fast. It doesn't say here three or seven days. I'm saying traditionally the uh, Jews would fast three or seven days. You would get other fasts as well, 21-day fasts, and then you would get 40-day fast. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, we can see uh, how the Lord is busy moving, strategically moving them in, into areas. And, and one thing that we can learn about this scripture, uh, family in Jesus, is that uh, wherever the Lord places us, you and me, wherever the Lord places us, it's never a mistake, ever. It is, it's never human error. It is never uh, by chance. It is never uh, because of a gamble. It is always strategic on the part of the Lord. Maybe sometimes, or, or a lot of times, we as humans don't see the strategic plan in that. Because um, Sometimes, or most of the times, wherever the Lord places us is extremely uncomfortable for us. Very. And, and, and again, if we go through the book of Acts, we can see that it was similar here as well. That, that there were seasons. So we would start at a place and uh, everyone would maybe accept you because you knew and, and they would uh, pull you closer. But as... as uh, as soon as the, the Lord would start His work in you and through you, a lot of people don't like the uh, truth of the Word of God because it goes against what they have built in their lives. Uh, and then it will start to get uncomfortable and, and brothers and sisters in Christ, then you must know that, that you are at the right place. If I am at a place in my life where I receive no persecution, I receive no um, uh, resistance, uh, then, then I must start to worry because then I have gotten to a place in my life where Paul teaches us, then I am just tickling everyone's ears. And I am teaching and preaching what, what satisfies people and what they want to hear. So then we must be very careful uh, because we can see that it's not biblical. That as soon as the disciples and the apostles were building in Jerusalem, persecution came. They dispersed. They went to um, uh, the, the rest of uh, Judea, uh, Samaria. And as soon as they tried to settle there and, and build the, the church there, something happened to, to make them move. Either the Holy Spirit spoke to them, made them, them move. So what we can see in the, uh, the, the stories and the teachings of the New Testament is that in our ministries, the Lord does not want us to get comfortable. Because when we get comfortable, we get tolerant. And when we get tolerant, then we um, lose a, a lot of the truth of the Word of God. Because that's when we start to, to compromise on a lot of things. Uh, so the Lord wants us to constantly move. Amen? Constantly move. You can go through the, the New Testament from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to Acts, to, to Romans, straight through to Revelation. You can see that the Lord is constantly um, um, causing the apostles and the, the disciples to, to change, change things. Um, and that is one thing that goes against tradition and religion. Tradition and religion love to stay in one place and do the same thing over and over and over again um, and, and, and get no results. So that's what religion does. And then the Lord brings us in that are true disciples of Jesus. And he brings that change because the Holy Spirit brings change. And you can see straight through the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit doesn't work in, in one specific way 
with the apostles the whole time. As, as I said, sometimes he sends an angel to open the prison gates, to release someone. Um, other times he, he himself, the Holy Spirit, speaks to the apostles. Other times he sends uh, the Roman soldiers to persecute them, to, to move, to disperse them. Other times he allows the apostles to uh, perform signs, wonders, and miracles to bring in crowds. Uh, so the, the Holy Spirit also brings a, a lot of change in the way that they used to run um, the, the religious side. So just a brother and sister in Christ, uh, take heart. If you are in a, a position or in a place right now where you are being um, maybe put down or, or pushed one side because of um, your zeal, towards uh, uh, for God's kingdom and for his word and and because you are intolerant of that that is outside of the word of God amen um, and because you 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 want to keep on moving and, and keep on building the the foundation and 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 you're putting your hand to the plow and you're not looking back it's all biblical so just take heart um, stand firm when things get a little too hot do what the disciples and the apostles did here. Get together with some other believers. Um, pray and fast. Pray and fast. Amen. Pray and fast. Uh, that always causes the Lord to, to move. Always. Amen. Um, for now, please just join me in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word, for the truth of your word. We thank you that you are teaching us, Lord, how to go out and effectively move in our town and minister in our town and how to effectively build um, and strategically build, Lord Jesus. And thank you for teaching us how to build um, that that the world cannot break down. Because, Lord, the, the, the world can destroy and break down tradition and religion, but they cannot destroy and break down um, discipleship that the Holy Spirit has built. And we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you that you have chosen us in this exciting time that we are in to, to be able to go out and, and minister in our town. Thank you, Father God, that every time that we go out, that your Holy Spirit reminds us to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, to always speak the truth of the word of God, to stand firm on the truth of the word of God, to not move left or right, not be swayed by by clever words or, or worldly philosophy, but to stay firm on the truth of the word of God. And we thank you for that, Father God. Thank you that we are, have been chosen to build something that will last for eternity until um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes to fetch us one day. Lord, we look forward to that day. Thank you, Father. We pray, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Thank you, family in Jesus. Um, exciting times we are in. Amen. And uh, I've said it a hundred times. I'm going to say it a thousand more times. Even if there's just a handful of us, that's all the Lord needs. Amen. That is all the Lord needs. He just needs a handful. He only needed a handful of people to put on an ark to preserve what he wanted to build here on earth. He only needed a handful of people to sit in an upper room and wait for the gift that he promised them. And here in, in our beautiful town of Altham, that we are praying and fasting that the Lord will save. He only needs a handful. Amen. And if that handful is dedicated and we have given out everything and we pray and we fast and we seek the face of the Lord, I, I, I know biblically that, that the, the Lord will move in our town. Amen. And, 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 and that handful of us, we can't wait until that happens. Amen. So until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.